Hi guys, before I get started, I want to share with you guys that I am setting big goals for myself this year. Yes, and the first goal, and it's a monthly goal, is that I am going to be hitting 60,000 subscribers by the end of this month, March. Yes, I know you might think, ah ah, okay, that's a big goal, but you know what? I have a big God and I have you. So make it happen. Hit that subscribe button, share this video with your friends and family and tell them to join the Sassy Forget family. You can make it happen for me. So you probably clicked on this video because you're looking to get a new Nigerian passport and someone told you, maybe me, that you need a NIN in order to get that. Or you're looking to get a SIM card and you need a NIN for that. Or simply because you heard the acronym NIN and you have no clue what it stands for, what it's all about, not to worry because in this video, I'll be explaining what exactly a NIN is, what it is used for, and how you can get one. Whether you're based abroad in the US, UK, anywhere else there, or locally in Nigeria. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Sassy Funke and I'm a Nigerian author. I wrote the book Lagos Travel Guide, check it out. I'm also a travel and lifestyle content creator. I'm also the founder of Travel to Ninja. Travel to Ninja is your number one trusted platform for everything travel to and from Nigeria. So I ask that you go check out Travel to Ninja on Instagram you are going to be part of an incredible community. So definitely follow Travel to Ninja on Instagram. So what is a NIN? The acronym NIN stands for the National Identification Number. It states here that the National Identification Number is a set of numbers assigned to an individual upon successful enrollment. The enrollment consists of the recording of an individual's demographic data and capture of their 10 fingerprints, head to shoulder facial picture, and a digital signature, which are all used to cross check existing data in the National Identity Database to confirm that there is no previous entry of the same data. It goes on to state that the number consists of 11 randomly assigned numbers. And once you've been assigned that particular number, it can never be assigned to anybody else again so it makes it quite unique it goes on to state that the NIN is used to tie all records about an individual in the database and is also used to establish or verify his or her identity who is eligible for a NIN it states here that all citizens and legal residents in nigeria from age zero birth and above are eligible to enroll for their NINs it also states here that it is mandatory for every citizen and legal resident to enroll for their name. So it's actually mandatory. So whether you live abroad though, or you live in Nigeria, it is mandatory to get a name. And we already know this because over the past couple of months, there were situations whereby the government was going to actually um, stop telecoms companies from allowing those without a name to use their phone numbers. So they're very serious about it. So it's really important for you to get a name. And if you don't have a name and you come into Nigeria, you will not be able to get a SIM card, a new SIM card. So it's good to bear that in mind. So why is the government making the name mandatory? Why is it now a requirement for all legal residents and all Nigerians? It states here, to the society as a whole, the NINs issued help provide accurate records about living or dead persons in every region of the country and this is sort of like a census because think about it we don't really have a database where we know how many nigerians are in this country like we can actually say we have 200 million 500 000. we don't know right so the name will help establish that second it says to help keep track of actual transactions as well as movement of people within and out of the country I guess this could be said to be like a big brother, right? It's a big brother. And I kind of like this, right? Even though I don't like being watched, it's good to know how people are moving and you can track 
to protect everybody else. You know, if we know what how people are moving, how they and we can we can pinpoint where they are and what they're doing in a way, we can now start making people responsible for their behaviors, right? That's a different whole story. It states also, it helps confirm which individuals are in actual need of particular government services, e.g. age and retirement confirmation from pensioners, right? I guess what it states here, like what this refers to is that, for example, in the case of the pandemic, the government will be able to know who requires funds and will be able to disimburse funds to help people during this time and know that the money is going to the right person. So when we talk about, oh, how the government has not been helping Nigerians during this pandemic, by having a name, they can actually even provide financial assistance to specific people that require it. Um, and I think this is actually a good thing. It goes on to state that when it comes to access to vital services like passport issuance, banking services, land transactions, insurance services, and whatnot, uh, the name becomes necessary for cutting down the time needed for verifying documents to properly identify you in order to access the services you require. Two, reducing errors in allocation of services to the right people, I mentioned that. Three, prevention of fraud, 419, where someone else tries to impersonate you. Very important. And a lot more other things that I'll pop up right here so you guys can see exactly why we need um, the NIN, while the government wants us to need the NIN. I personally think like getting a NIN is a good thing um, when it all happens and it's all done um, because it actually protects the individual a little bit, even though it gives government access to your information, which they should have as a government, to be honest, if it's being used in the right way, right? What do you guys think? Leave a comment in the comment section if you believe this NIN thing is a good thing or if you don't. Um, explain to me in the comment section to why and let's have a dialogue about it. So to the part that I know you guys are excited about it's how do you enroll for a NIN? How do you actually get this whole NIN thing? First of all, I want to state that it's actually free to enroll for a NIN. What does that mean? I mean the government is not outrightly charging you to get a NIN. But I say that with caution because I know in the past if you're trying to get a NIN through your um, specific um, telecoms company, they might charge you a fee, a tax fee. I don't know if that's been waived now, but I know that was a big issue. But the government itself is not charging you to get a NIN. But note that I know in Nigeria that if you're trying to speed up the process of getting your NIN, some people might ask you for money to help you speed up the process. With all things Nigerian, you know, if you speed it, if you pay, you, your process is faster. But that money isn't going to the government. This is not a government requirement right but i can understand many people feeling like they have no choice but to pay because i visited one of the um nin registration centers i passed by it a couple of weeks ago the one near neki mall and there were like a hundred people there trying to get inside like i understand why people pay for it but let's leave that aside the point is the government will not charge you but somebody else might charge you to speed things up. So let's start with the supporting documents that you need to get ready for your NIN. It states here on the NIMC website that you walk into your nearest NIMC enrollment center with your BVN, if you have one, and any of the following required original or valid supporting documents. So to state here, you might be wondering, where is my nearest NIMC enrollment center? For those in the diaspora, I'm going to actually leave a link below whereby I'm going to share all the specific addresses for where you can enroll. So you can check that in the description box, that information. So what are the documents that you have to, that you could take along? You need one of the following with your BVN, if you have one, a national ID card, driving license, photos card, international passports, certificates of origin, um, birth certificates. I'm going to list all these things, pull it up down here and also leave a link to it down below so you guys can check in the description box for it. So now to the specific process of capturing applicants of 16 years or above. This is the, uh, this is the adult enrollment. If you're a child, it's a different enrollment and I might share that information in a separate video not to make this video too long. So the first thing is that the applicant walks into the enrollment center with the supporting documents, right, that I mentioned. Then the applicants will be verified to ascertain whether 
he or she has enrolled for a name before. For example, I've actually enrolled for a name years ago. I believe it was 2018. I actually they did this whole process back then. I did it, so I already have a name. So they do this just to ensure that you've not gotten a name before. Um, then they will now give you, um, the applicant will be issued an enrollment form to fill if you've not enrolled for a name before. I'll actually link it below um, what the enrollment form looks like and put it up here. It's a very basic form. It's like one sheet of paper, has your data information, your date of birth, where you're from, the ID you're supporting with, your signature, um, a bunch of other things there, but it's very simple and easy to fill. Then the applicant's form will be vetted by an official to just check that the information on there is fine and to ensure that you've not made any mistake on the form. It also states that if you cannot read or write, it's important that you bring someone along with you that can do this and assist you. It then states that the information that you put on the form is actually going to be inputted into the system um, by the official there, right? And if you've already had a main enrollment before, they're going to give you a barcode slip, which will be scanned um, by the official to populate all the fields that you need in there. The official would ask that the applicant to double check his or her information to ensure that there isn't any errors there. If the applicant is satisfied with his or her demographic information, then the biometrics, that's their 10 fingerprints and a facial image of the applicant will be captured. It's key to bear in mind that as much as this thing sounds seamless, right? Capturing. If the system is down, and you hear this a lot, the system is down, they cannot capture your fingerprint or your photo. So this might take, there's been delays for like a couple of days, which, which means you have to come back again to the center to capture. So bear that in mind that it might not be as seamless as like you fill out the form, it gets put in, and then you do your biometrics. You still have to, you may still have to come back again to get your biometrics done. So once that's actually done, um, you, after completing the enrollment, a transaction ID slip will be issued to the applicant as evidence of the transaction, just to let you know that you've actually done this whole process, the capturing process. However, it states here that this transaction slip does not confer the right to a national identification number, which means that it doesn't mean you're gonna get a national ID because you've done this process. The applicant will then be requested to come back for the NIN within one to five working days as it is subjected to the availability of network authentication and verification, which means that you have to come in back in again. It's not automatically generated because they send all the information to the central database in Abuja. And once those people have processed the information before you can actually have your actual name, right? I don't know if the timestamp is the same for people um, abroad, but to be honest, this one to five days, who knows? That's the, as in, Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but take it with a pinch of salt and don't think it will definitely happen in that five days. So I would advise you that if you're trying to get a new passport, don't wait until close to the time. Try now, even now, if your passport is even expiring in next year, try and get your name now. It then states that a national identification slip is issued to the applicant after processing. Also, the national e-ID card will be issued to the applicant within 12 months after issuance of NIN, barring any unforeseen circumstances. So guys, I really hope my video has been useful in breaking down to you what exactly a NIN is, who requires a NIN, and how you can get one. I really hope it's been super useful and informative as always. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you found this useful. Give this video a thumbs up to encourage me to keep creating this kind of content for you. And if you have other specific, specific video ideas you would like for me to create, don't forget to leave those ideas in the comment section below. Thank you for being a part of this amazing journey on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that subscribe as always. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you on my next video. Bye.